You don't have to be quiet. You're all right.
Jesus calling you. Bring your sorrows and trade me for joy. From the ashes of you I was born. Jesus is calling you. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. We can clap in church. Well, happy Easter. My name is Josh Sweeney. I serve as the director of Christian education. And it is amazing to see everyone here this morning as we gather and worship. One thing uh, that was told to me, if you are driving a red Honda minivan and you left the windows down on accident, that's happening. It might rain. We just want to let you know if you need to skedaddle out. It's also in a handicapped spot. That narrows the spots down. Um, but if you also are just looking to breeze it out, that works too. I had to do that a few times with my car. Got the three-year-old. I understand. Um, well, welcome. If you're joining us here for the first time and you uh, have kids, if you didn't notice, we have the Knox Kids Wall Worship Bags. Uh, please grab one of those um, on your way in, or you can uh, scoot out whenever the announcement slides go. But just want to let you know that that's there. Um, we also have the flowering cross that is in the annex. No, it's not. It's in the atrium. I know where I am. Um, it's in the atrium. Uh, thanks to Bruce and Candace Parker for putting that together um, and uh, the ability to have that. So make sure you have your family portrait, or if you just want a selfie there, make sure you take that 
photo as well. And then also want to acknowledge the rose here um, for Terry and Loretta White's granddaughter. And so we give thanks and celebration for that. And now we have our uh, announcement video of all the things we have coming up. So let's check it out. For those attending in person, when ushers pass out our welcome bags, please take a moment to sign up. For our online community, you can sign a virtual welcome pad or our website or simply drop a friend link below in the Facebook comments. To our first time visitors, we extend a special invitation to you. We're so glad you're here and we hope you'll stay a while after the service for coffee and conversation between the welcoming atmosphere of our atrium and just outside the sanctuary. Once again, welcome to Knox Church. We're honored to share this time of worship and fellowship with you. Check out what we have coming The transition team would like to thank everyone who has completed the pastoral search inventory survey. If you have not yet completed the survey, you can complete it online through March 31st. The survey link can be found on the Knox website under TM Pathways. A link was also sent in an email from Katie on Thursday, March 21st. The link is www.knoxchurch.org right slash TMP. The results of the survey will be integrated with information gathered during our focus groups, which will occur in April. It is important to get your feedback. The transition team thanks you for your involvement. Good morning and happy Easter. The outreach team would like to express their gratitude to everyone who so generously provided food for last week's Palm Sunday breakfast. There was certainly a plentiful supply of breakfast casseroles, donuts, bagels, coffee cakes, and fruits for all of us to enjoy. Let us all be thankful for the bounty that God has provided for us, the hands that prepared our feast, and the fellowship we shared in his presence. Hello parents of infants, toddlers, and pre-K. You are invited to a new small group that is beginning called the Dynamic Duo Chili and Bandit, How Dogs Can Teach Us a Few Tricks. Through this group, we'll dive into discussions on fostering creativity, nurturing emotional intelligence, and finding the perfect balance between play and structure in our children's lives. We meet at 10 a.m. in the annex, the room right next to the gym slash fellowship hall, and the kids are invited too, so they can play in the gym next to us. To sign up or find out more information, simply send an email to josh at knoxchurch.org. Don't miss out on this opportunity to connect with fellow parents gain valuable insights, and have a whole lot of fun along the way. We can't wait to welcome you to the Dynamic Duo. We hope to see you at our upcoming events. Here at Knox, we strive to live out our mission of reaching out to our community, teaching and caring for everyone we come in contact with, equipping and sending us all out for ministry. We're so glad you're here with us today.
After the Sabbath, at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, and an angel of the Lord came from heaven. Going to the tomb, the angel rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, just as he said. Go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead. Jesus is risen today.
At this time, um, those that are involved in Kids Club, which is kindergarten through second grade, you are dismissed to go with Miss Sam. Uh, not, we're not kicking you out, but there is programming for parents that might be worried. <laughs> That'd be terrifying. Will you join me in a word of prayer, please? Almighty and everlasting God, hallelujah, we praise you. O God, for the power of your saving love revealed in the resurrection of our Lord, as we have raised Jesus from the dead, as you have raised Jesus from the dead, give us the gift of everlasting life, that we may worship you forever through Christ our risen Savior. Before we call you answer, O Lord, before we speak, you know our words. Let there be joy in Jerusalem and peace among all nations. Let sounds of weeping and cries of distress turn to shouts of joy and laughter. Let infants grow and thrive and let all of us dance like children. Let every person find a home and enjoy the fruits of their labor. Let the wolf and the lamb live in peace and let no one hurt or destroy another. Show us, O God, the holy mountain you have prepared, the new heaven and the new earth you have promised, so that we may be glad and rejoice in your presence forever. May your divine grace surround us, your mercy uphold us, your love guide us each step of our journey. Bless us with the strength to face the challenges of life and the wisdom to discern your will. Grant us, O Lord, the courage to spread your message in love and peace to all corners of the earth. God, we hold in our hearts the unspoken prayers, the prayers that we have held deeply, and those that we lift up to you. We pray for Aunt Barbara Tatey. We pray for Anna McNamara. We pray for Vicki James. We pray for Lori Smith's dad and stepmom. We pray for Susan and Scott and Joan and Al. We lift up Larry and Robin, Madonna, Bob, and we continue to pray for our homebound, O oh God. We praise you, O oh God, and we give thanks that you have given us such joy, such grace, and such hope. In the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, let our lives be proof of that good news. Let all our words and actions, our love and service, bear witness to your resurrection power for the sake of our living Lord Jesus Christ. We offer these prayers in faith, trusting in your unfailing love and infinite wisdom through the words your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Some of you know because I've asked you um, to pray for me this Easter Sunday, um, but I would invite the rest of you to pray along with me these words again. Today is a day of hope and assurance. Heavenly Father, let the words that I speak not be my words, but literally to be your words, what the Holy Scripture proclaims. And may our hearts be opened even as the disciples were open to see Jesus, the risen Lord. We pray this in his precious name. Amen. What we learn from the scriptures, and some of you maybe have been going through this week, reading through the gospel accounts where we see Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they talk about Jesus' death and his resurrection. And... um, we learn that there was early resurrection appearances that Jesus made. For example, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they went to the tomb on that first day of the week. And there was a violent earthquake. Has anybody ever here in this group, raise your hand if you've ever been around an earthquake when it took place. A few of you have, most of us haven't. But imagine a violent earthquake took place and then an angel came down from heaven, rolled back the stone on the tomb, and he sat upon it. And the scripture even describes this angel's appearance. The appearance was like lightning and the clothes were white as snow. Very much unlike the choir the last uh, Good Friday when everybody was in black. So this is talking about even in that message given by the angel, there's, there's great hope. The guards were terribly afraid when this earthquake put, took place and then the angel sitting came down and was sitting on the, uh, the stone. It says they were frightened and they became almost like dead men. An angel spoke and said, Do not be afraid, you're looking for Jesus. He is risen just as he said. See the inside of the tomb, check it out, and quickly tell his disciples that he's risen and he's going to Galilee and there they will see him. That's my message. Gosh, wouldn't you have loved to have been that angel to be able to tell that message? What a fabulous message to give. Well, the women still left a little bit afraid because this is not what they expected. Yet they were filled with joy, and the scriptures say they ran off to go tell the disciples. Jesus met them. He clasped his feet, they clasped his feet, and they worshipped him. But Jesus said, go on, tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and then there I will see you. Okay, the gospel message has also got what we call some barriers. Because they don't want this good news to go out, they meaning the Pharisees, the scribes, the Jewish leaders. Instead, they got together with the guards and they found out what had happened. Well, then they said, I've got a deal for you guys. We're going to give you some money, but here's what we want you to tell, that at night the disciples came, they stole Jesus' body away. Well, that sounds like, you know, that's a pretty good story. And, you know, they, you know, the guards were into that. So the result was they took this report to the governor and it kept the guards out of trouble. So the story was widely told among the Jews. And when you think about it, there's still even Jews today that don't believe what the scriptures say, that Jesus was the Messiah. It's not what they expected. It's not what they wanted. So, 
The disciples, when the ladies got there, they heard the story. And it says some of them thought it was just pure nonsense. Well then, on, there was a couple of the disciples we read in the Gospel of John. They were on this road going to Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were on this trip, and they were discussing between each other what had happened or the word that would come out that Jesus was no longer in this tomb. Well, Jesus decided he was going to join with them. The problem was that you would have thought, well, gosh, then that would just immediately tell them, here's the risen Lord. But it says they didn't even recognize him. So they're discussing about this story. And Cleophas described Jesus as this fabulous prophet, powerful in word and deed, and people who had hoped he would come and be the redeemer of Israel. See, that's what a lot of the Jews wanted and expected. They'd been in bondage. They'd had, you know, they'd oftentimes found themselves in lives of slavery. And so they were hoping that this Jesus would be the Messiah that they had longed for. And it says, then on the, on the road, Jesus said, did Christ have to suffer these things and enter glory? And then he began talking about Moses and the prophets explaining what the scriptures were saying about himself. He broke bread with them, and then it says, miraculously, their eyes were opened. And they knew it was the Lord. Oh my gosh. Any of you want to be those two guys back there and have that kind of conversation? It's, it's so exciting to think how Jesus not only revealed himself to them and then disappeared, but Jesus reveals himself to many people today, and he's there, and people don't have eyes to see or ears to hear. And so the result is their hearts are turned away from that opportunity to know Christ, the Messiah. And it says here that on this road to Emmaus, that these two disciples, their hearts were literally burning as Jesus opened the scriptures to them. And then he appears once again, showing his wounds, his fleshly body to the disciples, as they ate together. He explained the resurrection and the prophecy must be fulfilled according to God's unbelievable plan. They were witnesses and the disciples would be sent out. Sent out. That's what it means. You know, they were disciples. And then we have a new word introduced, which is apostles, which means one sent out. And hopefully that's what many of us see ourselves out as, is apostles going out and telling others about the name of Jesus. The disciples, the next day they go and they decided, here's what we can do. We, we remember our trade which for many of them, that was the fishing pole. And see, Greg gets excited because he's thinking about the men's retreat already, and he's thinking about that opportunity to do a little fishing, and some of you guys are. But this is what their occupation was prior to Jesus calling them to be his disciples. And it says, he asked them had they caught any fish. Anybody know the answer to that question? It was a big fat no. They hadn't caught any fish. So Je Jesus said, well now throw the net on the right side of the boat. And just, just give that a try. 
And that's exactly what they did. The disciples did this, and it says the catch was so large that they couldn't even bring the hall in. But then all of a sudden, Peter jumped in the water when he recognized that it was Jesus calling from the shore. And it says he swam to them, and I can imagine, as fast as he could. The others followed, and Jesus invited them to an important meal that's called breakfast. So Jesus was there with the disciples. He gave bread and fish to them. And this was his third appearance. Now the fourth appearance is one that I find extremely important because it involves one of the disciples that was part of the inner three, Peter, James, and John, and that's Peter. Now we talked about this about Peter's denial and how he had said, you know, all, all may fall away, but not me. And Jesus responded and said, before the cock crows, crows twice, you'll have denied me three times. So here's what happens. Jesus asked Peter a very important question. He said, do you love me? more than these, or more than anyone. And Peter responds, yes, and he says, well, feed my sheep. Jesus goes on to repeat that question to Peter three times. And Peter's very exasperated by that time. Like, you know, Jesus, don't you trust what I'm saying? Well, Jesus did this to indicate there was a message there, the type of death and how Peter himself would eventually glorify God by being a martyr for Christ. So it's a very important conversation he's having with Peter. And it says that Jesus did many other things after the resurrection and was eventually uh, revealing himself more information, it says, than all the books at that time could possibly contain. Now, the last thing Jesus did before he left, some of you know this, it's referred to as the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is at the end of Matthew 28, and here's what Jesus was saying. He was on a mountain, and it says he was reassuring the disciples with these words. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now you go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you, and surely, surely, I will be with you to the end of the age. Well, that's a great story, and it involves the disciples. It involves, you know, people a long time ago. But what about us today? What does that mean to us when it comes to sharing the good news of the risen Lord? I just want to share a story that involved me this last week. I have a friend named Russ who I went to high school with in Wichita, Kansas. And my family knew Russ pretty well because my dad and his dad worked together. And uh, growing up, he did not have any kind of Christian influence. His home was not religious in the slightest. But then when my dad worked with his dad, he got an influence there that he had not had. And Russ ended up, he worked at the same store that his dad had opened. And it was about 20 years ago, his wife Jeannie and their daughter were out riding in the neighborhood. And uh, Russ told me that um, a car 
evidently not paying attention, hit the daughter and his wife on the uh, tandem bicycle. His daughter was killed, and his wife became a paraplegic. So Russ took to alcohol and has spent over 20 years as an alcoholic. And for some reason, I felt compelled this last week because I believe it was the Holy Spirit, you know, saying, you need to talk to Russ. And so I called him up and he told me some of this story. But then he told me how just within the last month and a half, he had given up alcoholism because a Christian lady reached out to him. And then he sent me uh, the following, which went to a Catholic bishop who had reached out to his wife, Jeannie, during the time that she was a quadriplegic and trying to live for Jesus. She was a Christian. Here's the letter that Russ sent back. He sent this back to the bishop. He said, would it not be splendid to believe exactly as my precious genie did seamlessly and vehemently her entire life? That there is a God and Christ who came to absolve our sins. Suffice it to say that she was raised right and seldom challenged in her belief save being married to me. Paltry stuff for those that are resolute. My personal outlook was shaped very differently. My parents were non-religious. My cloak of skepticism cut from cloth fashioned over many years fits. I'm not a denier, nor do I reject God. I just don't know. I'm supportive of those that do and will always be. The institution that is Catholic and those that are Christian and any other that steer the flocks to charity, they have moral profundity, giving meaning to the dreary and beauty enlivened. Educate with virtue-directed compass. They have my profound respect. My children and grandchildren are embodied of such, and my friends much the same. Now, this is the, this is the important part right here. He said, to expend my energy beyond your earlier drive by baptism of the desire will be merely an intellectual abstraction. Hold forth no grandiose hope for my crusty soul, I'm still angling to ride in on Jeannie's coattails. So in other words, he's hoping that somehow, because his wife was a believer, that he's going to get into heaven. That's when I decided it's time to take action. And I sent him the follow, and I close with this. I said, Russ... I know firsthand that you miss the Christian and church upbringing that I had with Betty and Dewey. That's my parents. We don't get to choose our parents as we grow up. I know both my dad and my mom were raised in Christian homes. It's a legacy that has been in our family for well over 100 years. My kids will continue this legacy they will continue it as they continue to grow in what the Bible teaches them about God's plan and His grace extended even through the roughest of times. For the Bible teaches that mankind is sinful. Sinful meaning missing the mark, missing the mark of God's high standard of love and therefore came up with a plan of sending His only Son, Jesus, to go to the cross and to die on our behalf to absolve the penalty of our sin. Russ, I have often been challenged in my own Christian faith. The death of our child back in 1989 has been very rough for Cindy and I. 
It was a horrible tragedy that happened no result of what we did. Losses and deep hurts affect us in many ways, and you all can, can identify with that. Cindy even went through depression after our first son died, but eventually her faith in God helped Cindy to overcome some of her anger and the fears that had plagued her. Does it mean that your life will get easier? No! It will get tougher when you serve the Lord and other people because they often do what? They disappoint us. The two greatest commandments are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Unexpected tragedy can strike anyone at any time. We don't deserve nor want it, but the God of Scripture will help us through life as we learn to trust Him more day by day. He knows your stubborn and crusty heart. Yes, I said that to Him, because I felt it needed to be said. And then, closing with this, it says, for someone in your position, Russ, you need to allow access and love God for you right now. Right now. My prayer today is for you to learn the assurance of the eternal presence of God who wants us to love like Jesus did through our own lives. Realize that I have a spiritual love for you, my friend, and I want you to be in heaven one day with your wife, Jeannie, and myself. Now, we here at Knox Church, we believe in gifts. No greater gift than we have than to share God's love with others. And if you don't do it, you're missing out on a privilege that is ours. So pray that God can use you to reach out to a Russ or somebody that you know. And just even to remind them of John 3.16, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So here today, as we receive gifts, these are monetary gifts, think about the more important gift, which is to be able to give your life, your Christ-like life, for others. Let's receive our offerings. God was willing to go to reach the world with his love and it shows how far Jesus was willing to go for the redemption of all. Jesus made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on the cross. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and now sits at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the living God, the great I Am. This is Jesus, the Holy Lamb of God. This is Calvary's love.
joyful than that. Now, if you haven't noticed, we have some people here that are grandparents, and they're showing off those grandbabies. <laughs> what they're doing is they're leaving a legacy. And that's what all of us have the privilege of doing, is leaving a legacy with someone else that they might be a Christ follower. So let's go with the joy of Christ in our hearts and start to invest in that legacy. Amen. Amen.